A question I get asked a lot is, how do I have time to do all the things that I do? And I actually wanted to make a whole video on this because it's not just me who's really busy, but this is a really common phenomenon for women in midlife and at menopause. We tend to be really at the peaks of our careers or we've really gotten to the point where we're very comfortable and confident and knowledgeable in what we're doing at the same time as our hormones are changing and the environment around us is constantly throwing challenges our way. So I'm going to tell you a little bit how I learned to do all of the things that I like to do and give you some tips and tricks that you could use in your daily life. If you don't know me, I'm Dr. Heather Hirsch. I'm the clinical program director of the menopause clinic at the Brigham and Women's Hospital. And I also serve as faculty at Harvard Medical School. At the same time, I'm the course creator of the Reclaiming Menopause Masterclass. This is a course designed for proactive go-getter women who are interested in learning all the ins and outs of hormone therapy and how to figure out what's right for you. More about that at the end. You can watch this video if you're interested in that. So I want to tell you something that I read that really changed my life when it came to productivity. Now, I am genetically not a morning person. In fact, it is still very difficult for me to get up in the morning. And I have mentioned this book before. I did it um, when I talked about seasonal affective disorder and how I really kind of changed my life around so that I could, you know, be a better per person, be a more productive person, even in the winter months where I feel, you know, slow and sluggish and fatigued. I read this book here, The Miracle Morning. This is by Hal Enrod, and this book, which he self-published actually, really, really changed my life. Now, it's definitely worth the read because I can certainly give you some of the cliff notes and then tell you how I've adapted it to my life, but actually reading through it is what made me become more of a morning person. Now, has it stuck around in its entirety? Eh, hard to say, but let me tell you some of the principles of this book and how it's really helped me be able to achieve all the things that I wanted to do and also have some time to relax and just be human. So what I took away with it is that there is five principles that help me feel really energized and productive that help me to not only have a full-time job at my hospital and see patients there, but also be a mom of three small kids and a wife, as well as YouTube and podcast. And I love doing all of this. And quick shout out to subscribe to the channel if you haven't already, because as I see you guys really liking this type of content and wanting more, it really gives me that mojo, that motivation to keep doing it for you. The five key principles in like the miracle morning, and I'll tell you kind of how I've adapted that, is uh, incorporating these in your day in some way. It's meditation, reading, affirmations, writing, and exercise. Now, when I first read this book, I got up at like 5.30 in the morning and I would make sure that actually I had my coffee set to brew at like 5.25 so that when I came down the stairs, I could smell the aroma of coffee. That is literally the only way that I will still get out of bed and I would start with meditation. I am not good at meditation. It's something that's really hard for me to do quiet my mind, but what I found really helpful for meditation is guided meditation. Now I do this on the Peloton app. This is totally not sponsored. It's just what I've been using and I actually got my bike um, in 2019, uh, pre the world changing. Um, and on the Peloton app, which actually I think you can download even if you don't have you know, one of their bikes or treadmills, there is some phenomenal guided meditation practices which I've really been able to incorporate in my life. And I think it's really key to actually just tapping into the mind potential that you don't even know that you have. So if you haven't meditated before, I definitely recommend starting out the way I did, which I'm still doing, which is guided meditation, even five minutes a day, that's all that I do. I've also turned this into guided meditation at night because for many of my patients and my students, it's when we get into bed that we start ruminating, we start thinking, we start trying to solve all of our problems when we get into bed. So I also do a five minute sleep meditation and it has really been such a game changer in allowing me to fall asleep so much better. 
The next thing that I do is I journal, and I've always been someone who likes journaling. In fact, if you watch my videos before, you know that I talk about journaling and tracking all the time, especially when it comes to periods, symptoms, hot flashes, mood swings, etc. But I really, really love journaling. I usually start with just like my thoughts and just kind of letting them settle out whatever was in my mind and actually writing it out. And then it actually turns into something really magical. A lot of the time, I don't know that I'm tapping also into something like really where I want to get into or I have this deep seated idea and being able to write in journal really helps me bring this to light. I also do some affirmations and affirmations sounded really, really cheesy to me when I first started. But you know, one of my affirmations was, I really wanna grow my YouTube channel to 5,000 subscribers because then, you know, I'll know that YouTube thinks this is an interesting topic and I can help more women. And I've been able to achieve that. And so I really find that affirmations, whatever you wanna start with can be really, really, powerful. Sometimes while I'm journaling or I'm doing affirmations, I come up with the silliest things that make me laugh that I'm just like, that would never come true or that's just like so far-fetched, but really truly, you never know. And I do kind of believe in the whole, like if you put it out into the universe, it will come back to you. So just put things out to the universe, try it on, see how you do. So reading is something that is really hard for me to actually do. I'm usually reading like three or four books at once. And you know, sometimes when I just only have 20 minutes to myself in the morning, which is on a good day, I don't really have time to read. So in all honesty, sometimes I do either skip this one or gloss over it, but that means I might actually read what I wrote in my journal yesterday because I've got my journal right in front of me. So that's really helpful. If you're someone who likes to read religious material, the Bible, even if you just read a passage or two, it's absolutely going to set your day off in just a completely different foot. Or if you have a book that you've just been leafing through, even if you just read five minutes of it, again, these things all just kind of cleanse our palate, our brain, to help us be more productive as we go into the day. Exercise is also something that I love to do. And I really think that exercise should be primarily for mental health. And then all the physical benefits that come from exercise, you know, can come after that. Of course, exercise is great for cardiovascular health, if you're doing weight bearing exercise for bone health, but really start exercising just for your mental health. So as I mentioned, I do have a Peloton and totally not sponsored, but I do like being able to work out at home because as somebody who is really strapped for time, you know, I don't have time to go to the gym, although I used to love to do that and have friends there and have community. And that's so important. If you're at that stage of your life where you can do that, I highly recommend you doing it. And I may even get back into that. I'm sure at some point when my kids get a little bit older, but for now, I really kind of have to exercise at home. You don't have to have a Peloton to exercise at home. You can literally just have a yoga mat. And sometimes I actually just do yoga right behind me when I don't really feel like pushing it or elevating my heart rate, but even just stretching or moving or getting blood flowing is so, so helpful. So I highly recommend that you do that. The other thing that I do is I really don't overthink things. In fact, if you guys have been watching my YouTube for a while, or if you listen to my podcast, and I will put the link in the description below because it's so much fun. I really don't try to over edit things and really actually it's because I don't have time. Maybe someday if I had more time or if I had a bigger budget, maybe I would. But I also think there's something fun about just sort of the relatability and the genuineness of my videos. And it really makes it so that I don't overthink it. If I can get it done, done is better than never even starting. I hope that was really helpful. I will link this book in the description bar below. You can get it on Amazon. It's really life changing. And I really think that anything that you can do to help yourself be your best, especially in midlife when there's so many demands placed upon women and our bodies are physically changing, anything you can do to give yourself like a one up or just some tips and tricks, so helpful. So if that was helpful, let me know in the comments below. If you wanna learn more about the Reclaiming Menopause Masterclass and get support with yours truly when trying to figure out hormone therapy and navigating perimenopause and menopause, definitely, again, click that link in the description and I'm gonna be there on the other side to help to see if it is the right fit for you. Also, check out my podcast. It's something you can listen to while you're driving and it's super raw and we have tons of fun over there. Thank you guys so much for watching. Thank you for subscribing to the channel. If you haven't already done so, please feel free. It's free to do so. You can always change your mind later. And as always, thanks again for watching, guys. See you next week.